you can totally tell it's new iPhone season because we nerds are once again angrier than Star Wars stands following Book of Boba. And the reason this time, I mean, same song, different verse. Apple's deleted yet another port, this time the SIM card slot, moving from a traditional card-based subscriber identity module to a newfangled electronic version that's no longer swappable at the human hands to hardware level, only via software, at least in the US, and at least for now. And for the mainstream, especially for anyone with accessibility issues ranging from motor skills to eye-hand coordination, it means no more SIM ejector tools, no more trays, no more nano chips to flip and often slip or just flip away, and no more having to worry about defects or damage sending you racing back to the store or leaving you waiting by your mailbox for more. But for nerds, for nerds, this is death by a thousand cuts, cut number 902 in a series, still bleeding from the loss of our 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks, something so beloved, Americans were actually willing to use the metric system for it. We're now losing the one thing that let us easily swap our carrier accounts between all of our various Apple and Android phones, sometimes dozens of them, and from and within countries as we race to avoid roaming. So is this just yet another attempt to lock us into what are increasingly hermetically sealed boxes and ecosystems utterly dependent on the various vendors for whatever perception of freedom they still deign to allow us? Or is it just progress, out with the old busted, in with the new hotness, forcing us to get past our change aversion so we can get to a better, brighter future for everyone. Spoilers, yes to both. I mean, we can add and remove and change email accounts, messaging accounts, all of our accounts as easily as logging in and logging out. And the fact that our carrier accounts, one of our most important accounts, are still tied in many places most of the time to a tiny little physical chip is redonkulous. But that doesn't mean there aren't still incredibly important nuances, contexts, and distinctions that don't make it redonkulously important to many of us. And yes, this keeps happening precisely because this keeps happening, which is super beyond insightful, I know. But just like Apple famously, infamously ditched the floppy drive to usher in the age of USB, the hard drive and SD card to go all in on SSD, replaceable batteries for bigger non-replaceable batteries, that 3.5 millimeter hole to create a whole industry around truly wireless headphones and the physical charging and data port, you know it's basically been quaking in its casing for years already, harder than a red shirt, just one away mission away from completely going away. And to be 100% crystal clear, it's not just an Apple thing. HTC ditched the headphone jack years before the iPhone did. Moto tested going eSIM only back in aught 20 already. And Samsung, dear sweet Samsung, they mock these things just long enough to fast follow them as fast as they possibly can. But as we keep moving from manual to automatic, not just on cars, but on everything, especially from messy, gnarly, traditional computing devices to tightly molded computing appliances, we are losing something, something important, a physical connection and sense of control over our own bought and paid for objects, our ability to plug and pull and swap and switch whenever and however we like. Just the other day, I took the SIM card from my godson's iPhone and stuck it in my Pixel to try and figure out why SMS wasn't working for him. It didn't work for me either, so I immediately knew it was a bad SIM and he could just get a replacement. And of course, over the years, I've swapped SIM cards between more review units than I can easily count. Same when I've gone overseas, because I, like many of you, am an alpha and omega nerd. Nerdimus Maximus, the Ted Lasso of tech, as it may be, but the Roy Kent of nerds. Because I also have just such tremendous empathy for non-nerds, for people for whom the automatic carification of tech has been a blessing and not a curse. Like that process of switching my godson from one carrier to another, porting his number and getting the first new SIM replaced for the second SIM was super annoying, really an inconvenience. And eSIM theoretically would have made that whole entire process just way less time consuming and painful. And of course, it would have required way less support from me. And sure, from the carrier service reps as well, which is 
ultimately what they want. And that's the thing. That's the reason. That's why this all keeps happening. For the vast majority of people, the non-nerds, their phones are now more solid, more stable, less prone to hardware failure, have better waterproofing and bigger batteries, and are far, far more accessible to use now that they're not dropping and cursing every time a tiny chip won't go in right or just falls all the way out. Where they can swap carriers, countries, and plans with a few taps rather than a bunch of highly specific tools. At least, that's the future. That's the dream. But the future is never the present, which is why I'm personally still on the fence a bit. Why I'd love to hear all of your thoughts. Because sometimes Apple and Samsung and Google and others push new technologies earlier than they really should in order to push adoption earlier than it might otherwise happen, causing some present pain to get us to the future faster. Apple with truly wireless headphones and now eSIM, Samsung with 5G, Google with RCS. Other times they wait longer, basically just reverse everything I just listed, all depending on each one's own unique market position and customer base, pain tolerance, device strategy, support and overall costs, future ambitions, and of course, revenue and control issues. But also, because everything, absolutely everything, is ultimately a compromise, a trade-off. Often what helps one group of customers or users inconveniences or even hurts another. And while none of us should ever, not ever be reduced to mere numbers, to percentages, we're also not always, if ever, gonna win all of those trade-offs every or even a lot of the time. And that's why most phones, including all the iPhones 14 outside the US, still have one eSIM and one physical SIM card because most of the world just isn't anywhere nearly ready for eSIM only yet, key part being yet. But the world keeps spinning, technology keeps evolving, and the best way to keep track of all of it is with Morning Brew, which has just become my safe space away from Twitter. It's where I now spend my first few moments of the day smart scrolling instead of doom scrolling each day, every day for free and get everything I really need to know in just five minutes. It's always there, right when I wake up, ready to read, with impeccable curation, snappy, informative, always relevant, oftentimes completely irreverent prose, 100% completely free, seven days a week. I mean, top three fastest ways to annoy people from Reddit? Love it. And by clicking the link in the description, you can enjoy it in your inbox as well. Everything from a quick market recap to the top stories of the day, like, how AI was used to win an art contest, prompting a discussion over vision, tools, ethics, guiding minds, cheating, and so much more. It's Morning Brew, it's free, it takes all of 15 seconds to subscribe, and it starts your day off smart. So just hit the button on the screen or click the link in the description, and you'll not only get a free newsletter you'll actually read, but one that you will consistently enjoy. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel, and so does hitting up this video to learn more about another big fight in tech, algorithms versus timelines, and the battle for the future of all of our social networks. Just hit it up, and I'll see you in the next video.